Yes, good morning, viewers. Uh, I know learners back at home, you are really waiting for this lesson, and here I am. So to begin with, my name is Emojong Brownstone. My learners call me Sir Emojong from Tweedle Junior School in Don Home in Nairobi. So today, I want to take you through a science lesson. And uh, I, might, I must also say this, that uh, whether you are in class 5, class 6, class 7, and class 8, don't worry, you sit there because uh, we are all going to benefit. Now, um, I'm very sure that um, most of the teachers in class 8 have cleared the science syllabus. And uh, what I want us to do today and this morning is a uh, a little, little bit of revision. revision. And, and I, I want us uh, to, to go through the, the common areas that, that are normally uh, tested in science KCPE papers. The common areas that are commonly tested in science KCPE papers. Now, now you will realize that um, in, in this KCP science paper, most of the questions come from the lower classes, right from class 4, class 5, class 6, class 7, then a few questions from class 8. So majorly we are going to dwell on class 4, 5, 6, seven and a bit of class eight more so those areas that i'm very sure even this year will be tested so allow me start with the first topic and that is the human body areas commonly tested in KCP, that is science paper. And uh, most of these areas are very simple, but you'll find out that uh, due to careless mistakes, you'll end up uh, failing these questions. Let's look at a topic like a uh, human body. A topic like human body. Now, human body is a topic that is taught right from uh, class 1 up to class 8. And uh, I want to say that uh, this topic, if you fail to understand very well, then, then believe, believe you me, you are, are going, going to fail this question that normally comes in KCPE. So, so under human, human body, body, there is teeth. 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 Uh, Roman 2, we, we have, have a breathing, breathing system. system. Uh, breathing system. Roman 3, we have the digestive digestive system. Uh, Roman 4, we have the circulatory the circulatory system. I want us to go through these subtopics under human body. And when time allows us, we shall look at other areas. 
Mm. Let, Let us start, start with the teeth. teeth. Now, now teeth, teeth is a topic taught in class four. four. Teeth, teeth is a topic taught in class four. four. Now, now it, it may sound, sound uh, so simple, simple but, but due to our careless, careless mistakes, we end up not getting this question right. right. Now, now what, what we need, need to do <coughs> when it comes to teeth? teeth we need, we need to, to know, know types, types of teeth. <coughs> types of teeth. We, we have, have four types, types of teeth, teeth namely incisors, canines, canines. We, we have, have the premolars, and, and we have the molars. molars. Two, three, four. Now, now after, after identifying the types of teeth, you should be able to give the functions of each type of teeth. Functions. You must be able to give functions. Let's start with the incisors. What do incisors do? Incisors. The function of incisors is biting and cutting. Biting and cutting. Number two, we have canines. Now you'll find out that canines have several functions as we are going to state them. One is tearing. And uh, let, let me come, come to this side. side. Two, we, we have piercing. piercing. We, we have piercing. We have nipping. So, so these ones are functions for canines. What, what of premolars? The pre premolars one chewing two uh, two have crashing then grinding. So those, those are functions, functions of uh, premolars. Then, then lastly, we have the molars. We have the molars. Molars. We have the molars. And you'll find out that they share the same functions with the premolars. We have chewing. Two, we have crashing. Then three, we have uh, grinding. So those are functions of the four types of teeth that um, we have. Now, after looking the functions of each type of teeth, we are going to describe teeth. We are going to describe each type of teeth. Now, now there, there are some features you need to know for you to be able to describe a particular tooth. So we are saying features for describing teeth. There are some features that are very important when it comes to description of teeth. And one of them is uh, the roots. Two, we have the cusps, also known as ridges. Three, we have texture. Sorry. We have texture.
Why are we saying roots? We have teeth with one root. We have teeth with two roots. We have teeth with the three roots. So when you are describing teeth, this feature known as roots is very important. Cusps or ridges. Cusps or ridges. Now, on the surface of teeth, we have uh, cusps or ridges. Then lastly, we have texture. How rough or smooth teeth are. Then number four, we have the surface. Surface in terms of how broad it is. How broad it is. We have teeth that are broad. We have others that are narrow. Now, how do you describe teeth? Description of teeth. Description of teeth. Describing Let's start with the first one. The incisors. Now, we have seen that um, incisors are used for cutting and biting. That's one of its description. And they are found at the front of the mouth. At the front of the mouth. These ones here. You know, because of the issue of corona i'm actually not allowed to touch my mouth so allow me just point at the front here so these ones here are your incisors and they are eight in number incisors are eight in number so if at all we are saying that incisors are eight in number therefore we have four in the upper jaw then Four in the lower jaw. Two on the right side of the upper jaw. Then two on the left side of the upper jaw. Two on the lower side of the... Two on the lower side of the jaw. Then two again on the uh, right side of the jaw. So what I'm saying here is that eight in number, eight in number, front of the mouth, another thing about incisors is that they are the first type of teeth to grow, first type of teeth to grow. Those fast to grow. Now, those with babies, small babies, you'll find out that uh, if you observe keenly, you'll see them with the uh, two incisors in front here before any other type of teeth grows. So, we are saying that incisors are the first type of teeth to grow. Now, because, because they are the first type of teeth to grow, to grow we, we can, can therefore say that they are the last one to be shed off. Shall look, look at what shedding off means. Last to be shed off. They are last to be shed off. Now, in scissors, just to be very fast, eight in number, in front of the mouth, First to grow, last to be shed off. Another one, description or characteristic of features of incisors is that uh, they are chisel shaped. Chisel shaped. They look like a chisel. Chisel shaped. She sell shaped. She sell shaped. She sell shaped. Now let, let us come to canines. Canines. Sorry. Let me use this one. 
canines. canines. Now, now, how do you describe, describe canines? canines? Uh, why how, or how do you describe canines 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 remember we say that canines are used sorry canines are used for tearing nipping and Piercing. We have four canines in number. We have four canines in number, meaning two in the lower jaw and two in the upper jaw. Two in the lower jaw and two in the upper jaw. Description, description number two, two they, they are, are second to grow second to grow now, now because, because you are saying, saying that they are the second, second to grow therefore they, they are also second to be shared off second to be shared off Second to be shed off. So, how many do we have in each side? 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 Now, because you are saying that there are four in number, two in the upper jaw, two in the lower jaw. So, on each side, we have one one. We have one on this side, one on this side, that's in the upper jaw. One, one on this side, side another one on this side, side that is in the lower jaw. That is in the lower jaw. Sharp and pointed. They are sharp and pointed. They are sharp and pointed. Now, when we were looking at the features that we must consider when describing teeth, features that we must consider when describing teeth. You'll find out that we have roots, cast, texture, and broadness, how broad it is. Now, I was saying that uh, these are the features for describing teeth. And uh, when you come to roots, you'll find out that incisors have one root. Incisors have one root. Incisors do not have cusps, stroke ridges. Incisors have a smooth surface. The surface of incisors uh, is smooth. Then it is narrow, it is not uh, broad. When it comes to canines, one root, it has one root. Uh, no cusps, no cusps, uh, smooth, smooth surface, smooth surface. So those are characteristic features of uh, canines. Now, what about premolars? What about premolars? Now, when it comes to premolars, remember we have seen that premolars are used for chewing, grinding, and uh, crushing. So premolars, eight in number, eight in number, meaning uh, four in each jaw, two in each side. Two, they have two roots. They have two roots. Uh, they have cusps or ridges. Uh, what, what about, about their texture? texture? They are rough. Number five, they are broad. They are broad 
then premolars are the last type of teeth to be shed off. Premolars are the last type of teeth to be shed off. That is very, very, very important and you should keep it in your mind. Then lastly, we have molars. We have molars. Their function, we have said, crushing, chewing, and grinding. Now, now when it comes to, to molars in terms of their number, you will find out that um, a child of 12 years has 8 molars. A child of 12 years has 8 molars. But when it comes to an adult, like me or like your parents at home, we have 12 in number. So 8 in children, almost. 12 years. Then in adults, 12. In adults. They are the last to grow. Number three. Last to grow. Molars are never shed off. Molars are never shed off. You, you must, must get that one clearly. That, that molars are never shed off and they are the last type of teeth to grow. Three roots. They have three roots. They have three roots. Three roots. Number five. They have cusps. Six. They are rough. Seven. They are broad. Now, now there's something I must say. That... <coughs> When, when it comes, comes to these four types of teeth, molars are not found in primary type of teeth. Remember, we have two sets of teeth. We have milk teeth, also known as temporary, primary or deciduous. Then the second set of teeth, we have secondary or permanent. So, so when, when it, it comes, comes to molars, they, they do not appear in primary set of teeth. That one must be understood. Now, now we, we have this type of molars known as the wisdom teeth. Wisdom teeth. Remember, I've seen that in children of about 12 years, they have eight. Meaning they have a deficit of four teeth. So those four teeth that grow last are the ones known as wisdom. They are known as wisdom teeth. Wisdom. Wisdom. The last four molars to grow in a human being is what is known as wisdom teeth. Wisdom teeth. Now, after that, uh, you also need to understand how are the structures of these teeth. How do they look like? Given one, are you able to identify? Very, very important. Very, very important. So let us look at their structures. In scissors, how do incisors look like? And I'm not a good artist. Then we have the canines. We have the canines. Right. The canines. The 
Hans. Then, then we have, have the, the Prim Molas. Then lastly we have the Molas. So, so those, those are, are the structures. So here we have the crown, we have neck, and then we have uh, the root. So, so these are the surfaces, surfaces we have been talking about here. here. And if, if you, you try to run your tongue on your teeth, you will find out that it feels uh, smooth when it runs on in scissors and canines, but, but when it runs on primolas and molars, they feel rough. So, so the cusps and ridges you are talking about are these ones here. These are, are the ridges. And, and it is because of these ridges that make these two types of teeth rough. So when it comes to scissors and canines, they don't have those ridges on their surface. On their surface. Now, now, when, when I, started, I started, I said that, that um, teeth is one of the common topics that, that is uh, set in KCP. So, so I, I just want, want us to see whether this is, is true or not. And we uh, can start from last year, that is in 2019, we had a question asking about uh, teeth we had a question on teeth. And that was question number 29, 2019. Question number 29, um, 2019. The question was, and I read, which one of the following features is least important when describing a molar tooth? Least important when describing a molar tooth. Remember, we have looked at features when describing uh, teeth. teeth, and one, one of them we have said roots, we have said uh, broadness or surface, we have said texture, texture and um, cusps or ridges. And, and the answers that were given are, the answers that were given are, um, along with give you the answers here. A was the uh, roots. B, it was the uh, cusps. C, uh, broadness and hardiness. Broadness, then lastly, hardiness. So from what we have, have learned, it's very, very evident that uh, such a question do appear. So you have roots, cusps, broadness, and hardness. So you find, find out that the correct answer is uh, hardness. Correct answer is uh, hardness. So that was in 2019. 2019. What about in 2018? What about 2018? 2018. We find out that in 2018, the question on teeth was never brought, but in 2017, it was there. 2017, that question was uh, there. Let us look at it. 2017, that was number... That was number 46. The table below shows the type, the type and number of teeth in an adult human being. In the other terms, they were asking for the number of teeth in the mouth. Remember, we have said that we have eight in scissors, we have four canines, we have eight uh, primolars, then we have 12 molars. So that question was also there. Then come to 2016. 2016, again, the question 
2016. 2016. Again, the question was number one. And again, which one of the following, the following characteristics can be used to identify molars? So, so you just go back, back to your characteristics or description of molars, then you get that answer correctly. One root and chisel shaped. Of course, that one is for in scissors. We have cusps and ridges. Of course, that is the correct answer. One root. Ridges, then uh, chisel shaped. That one is also wrong. So the correct answer is uh, cusps and ridges. So, so basically, what I'm trying to say is that don't ignore uh, class four, thinking, thinking that when you reach class eight, you only concentrate in class eight work. Even class four work is being tested in KCP. Now, now allow me move very fast to. The next one, which is uh, digestion. Which is digestion. Now, now what, what is this digestion? digestion? Digestion is the process of breaking down complex or big complex stroke. Big food particles into smaller or simpler into smaller or simpler particles that can be absorbed into the body. I repeat, digestion is the process by which complex or big food particles are broken down into smaller or simpler particles that can be absorbed into the body. So it means that the body cannot absorb big particles. Now, digestion takes place in a long tube that runs from the mouth to the anus. And this tube is known as elementary canal also known as the gut. So, so this, this elementary canal or gut is what is known as digestive system. It runs from the mouth to the anus. Now, parts of the digestive system. Now, when you're talking of parts of the digestive system, you're simply referring to parts of the elementary canal. Parts of the elementary canal. And the parts are as follows. Parts, parts of, of the mentary canal. We, we have the mouth. We have the oesophagus, also known as the gullet or food pipe. We have stomach. Uh, this is one, two, three. Number four, we have duodenum. Number five, we have small intestines, also known as ileum. Also known as ileum. We have large intestines. Large intestines. Also known as the colon. We have, we have the rectum, we have, have the anus. Now, now we find, find out that uh, we have, have organs that assist in digestion, but they are not part of the alimentary canal. canal. And these are, these are pancreas, liver, and the gall bladder. They only assist in digestion, but they are not found in an alimentary canal. Now, what, what you need, need to know is that you should be able to describe what happens in each part. That is the mouth, esophagus, uh, stomach, duodenum, and small intestine. Now, remember, uh, you can send in your questions using the numbers scrolling at the bottom of the screen.
can, can use, use the WhatsApp, WhatsApp number, can, can use the Facebook, and we shall keep on interacting. So, so you should be able, able to know what, what happens in each part. Now, now among these parts, we have where digestion, digestion takes place, where food is broken down into smaller particles, but we also, also have others where digestion does not take place at all. all. So, so let us start with the parts where digestion takes place. 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 One mouth. Two we have stomach. Three we have duodenum. Then lastly we have a small intestine or ear. So, so these, these are, are the only four parts, parts where digestion, digestion takes take place. Now, which, which type, type of food is digested in the mouth? Which type, type of food is digested in the mouth? Now, now in, in the mouth, carbohydrates or starch is digested by the help of saliva, which is a digestive juice. Therefore, we can say that the digestive juice in the mouth is saliva, and this saliva is produced by the salivary glands found in the mouth. So, in the mouth, carbohydrates or starch is digested by help of saliva as a, a digestive juice. Remember, in the mouth, we have several things that happen, and one of them is a mastication. Now, when you're talking of mastication, you're simply referring to Mastication, you are simply referring to uh, the mechanical breakdown of food by use of teeth that one occurs in the mouth. Then, by help of saliva, uh, food is rolled into bolus, a bowl like structure, which is then pushed through the esophagus by help of the so, so from, from the, the mouth, food goes into esophagus, gullet, or food pipe. Remember, there is no digestion in esophagus. Remember, there is no digestion in esophagus. However, we have a process known as peristalsis. Peris that take place, the rhythmic and contraction, the rhythmic contraction of the esophagus is what is known as peristalsis. Now, in esophagus, food move in a wave-like manner. In in esophagus, food move in a wave-like manner. And when food moves in esophagus, when food moves in esophagus. This is how esophagus appears. So this is the food bolus. That is the food bolus. So this one here represents peristalsis. Peristalsis. Now from esophagus, food moves into the stomach. And in the stomach, Proteins are digested by help of gastric juice. Gastric juice is produced by the walls of the stomach. Remember that. Also in the stomach we have hydrochloric acid. What is the role of hydrochloric acid? Killing germs that may be present in the food. Now from the stomach where food stays for three to four hours, it is then moved into the first part, the upper part of small intestine known as the duodenum. Now, what happens in the duodenum? In the duodenum, we have two juices. In the duodenum, we have two juices. And one of them is the pancreatic juice. The pancreatic juice, then we have bile. Now, where do these come from? Pancreatic juice 
comes from the pancreas, then bile comes from the liver. So it is the pancreas that produces pancreatic juice, then the liver produces bile. So in the duodenum, by help of these two juices, fats and oils are digested. Fats and oils are digested. Then the last part where digestion takes place is in small intestine. Now, in small intestine, we have finger-like projections, the finger-like projections known as the villi, that is in plural or villus in singular. On the surface of small intestine, we have the villi or villus in singular. Now, what do the villi do? They provide large surface area for absorption of food. It therefore means that in small intestine, digested food is absorbed. Remember the key word there is digested. We have digested and undigested. So it must be digested food. That is one function of the ileum. Then function number two, it completes digestion by producing the last digestive juice known as the intestinal juice. So it's the walls of the small intestine that produces intestinal juice. Then all the food that will not be digested up to the ileum, then it goes into the large intestine. In large intestine, no digestion. What, what happens in that intestine is absorption of water and mineral salts. So the function of large intestine is absorption of water and mineral salts. So the journey still continues from large intestine. The undigested food goes into the rectum where it is stored temporarily before a uh, Releasing. So, so when, when your rectum is full, that's, that's when you, 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 you ask, ask your teacher, teacher, excuse me teacher, may I go out for a long, long call. So, so if your rectum is not full, then you won't ask for that permission. So, so from the rectum we go to anus, and the function of the anus is uh, passing out of stool, feces or undigested food through a process known as ejection through a process known as ejection, through a process known as ejection. So basically that is all about uh, uh, digestion. So very fast, in a very few minutes, let me take you through uh, questions that were there in uh, KCPE, because it is also very, very, very common. <coughs> very 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 common because they normally appear they normally appear they normally appear let's start from 2015 2015 that was question seven show the following statement is correct about the digestive system Digestive system, system and acid also focus makes it easy for food absorption. Why are we saying that one is wrong? Food absorption takes place in small intestine. So there is no way that oesophagus can assist in food absorption. What oesophagus does is just channeling food, transporting food, allowing passage of food from the mouth to the Remember, you should be able to differentiate between elementary canal and oesophagus. Oesophagus runs from the mouth to the stomach and elementary canal from the mouth to the anus. Then stomach mixes food with digestive juices. Stomach mixes food with digestive juices. Now, that is the correct answer. Why are we saying so? Because in the stomach food is digested, and for food to be digested, it must be mixed with the digestive juices. So in the stomach food uh, is mixed with the digestive juice known as uh, gastric 
juice to digest proteins in it. For example, if you take meat, after chewing it will not be digested in the mouth, it will go straight up to the stomach for the first digestion. First digestion. Uh, so that was uh, 2015. Part of 2016. 2016, it was also there. 2016, that question was there. Which one of the following part? That was question three. If you have your paper back at home, which one of the following parts of the alimentary canal is correctly matched to its function? From an A, we have mouth. The function is digestion of food. A choice B, stomach production of bile. Choice C, small intestine, absorption of water. Then lastly, choice D, large intestine, absorption of digested food. So basically the correct answer is mouth digestion of food. Because you have said in the mouth, carbohydrates or starch is digested. Is digested. Then in 2017, maybe... Maybe we should take that, that one to be our last, uh, uh, our last, last one. one. 2017. That, that was number 45. There, there was, was a drawing on uh, parts of the digestive system, the structure was there, and the question was asking the juice produced in the mouth. The juice produced in the mouth is used to digest. So we have seen in the mouth we have saliva, the digestive juice, which is used to digest carbohydrates or starch. Now, um, what I'm trying to show you is that um, KCP is not hard. It is very simple, but it is because of the, the phobia we normally have end up dancing then we fail so as you have seen we have very simple questions right from class four up to class eight actually class eight you only have around five questions that is normally broad that is a broad so uh, in our next lesson probably will come next week we shall continue looking at uh, the other areas that are commonly tested in KCP. So make sure to tune in to KUTV for this LM Live. I'm very sure it's going to help you as far as uh, KCP is concerned. So I've been your <coughs> teacher today, again, Sir Emojong or Brownson and Mojong from Federal Junior School in Donholm. So from us here, it's bye.